In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome. Welcome to church this morning, second Sunday of Lent. I was away last week on retreat, which is like a special quiet holy holiday. It was marvellous. Um, and I am now full of energy. You will be worried to learn. So, but we begin as we always begin. And this is particularly important during Lent by remembering that we are fallen, broken and sinful. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please take a seat for our readings. to God. The response. <laughs> the response to the song is the Lord shall keep you from all evil. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. He will not suffer your foot to stumble. He who watches over you will not sleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall be the son. 
The Lord shall keep you from all evil. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade here on thy hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, neither the moon by night. The, the Lord, Lord shall keep you from all evil. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. It is he who shall keep your soul. The Lord shall keep you from your going out and your coming in, from this time forth or upon the the Lord shall keep you from all evil. Second reading is taken from Romans. Thanks be to God.
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, but no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can anyone enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is the spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. The demons said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lived up the serpents in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved to him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please do take a seat. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, decisions, decisions, decisions. What a process. What process do you use to make your decisions in your life? When we were children, for someone to pick the first go, even if we were playing a game, it was not uncommon to use the decision. 
decision, a decision making tool. It was like one potato, two potato, three potato, four. Or maybe it was rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Drawing straws. Or maybe flipping a coin. Maybe you did eeny, meeny, miny, moe. However, such decision making can be rather ridiculous when it comes to making major life choices. This is because the consequences of such decisions can affect more people and have more far-reaching implications. It becomes even more difficult when the decision costs you something. What will be required of you and what will you have to sacrifice to implement the decision? Even if you feel confident with your decision, it will take a step in place to begin its implementation. However, what happens when the decision is made for you? Do you find it more difficult to accept? While some people may like it, they don't have to make a decision. They still feel very uncomfortable when a life-changing decision is made for them. Every action requires you to take a step of faith because you do not know for sure how it will work out. When the Lord appeared to Abraham, his life changed drastically. And, not by, and that not by Abraham's own choice. As the Lord places his promise before Abraham, he redirects his faith and gave it a new meaning. God actually changed Abraham from being an isolator, worshipping false gods, into a man of faith in Christ. It was based on this promise, as mentioned in verse 3 of our text. The Lord said that all the families of the earth would be blessed through me. What was the Lord referring to? It was the continuing promise of when Adam and Eve fell into sin, the seed or offspring from a woman of the Saviour, who would crush Satan's power once and for all. With Yahweh's decision to appear to Abraham, he was choosing a family and a nation through whom he could bring the fulfillment of his promise to save the world from the power of sin, death, and the devil. Conversion happened when God takes a person and changes him. Changes him, changes and, and changes him into his place instrument to be, to bring his gracious promise to all of the people. The Lord chooses a guy who worshipped idols and false gods and to be his faith instrument to bring his gracious promise to all people. Absolutely, the point of God's revelation of himself is not to find the person who is worthy to be blessed. If that were the case, no one would experience his blessings since no one is worthy. The Lord's desire is to take sinful people and give them faith to follow him alone. That's you and me. When the Lord gave Abraham the command to leave his people, he promised him growth, honor, and spiritual blessings in the midst of his, this faith, this call to faith. However, the blessings would not be free of suffering and struggles as he took steps of faith. These promises actually posed the faith challenge to Abraham. Abraham was 75 years old, and now God was going to make him into a great nation. What about the fact that his wife, Sarah, was, about, was unable to have children? 
How can one become a great nation when his wife was barren? He was going to receive honor and blessing as an intruder in a foreign land and country. And what was about the promise of receiving material blessings, especially after having the comfort of his homeland? Abraham certainly needed to walk by faith, not by sight, as is mentioned in 2 Corinthians. The Lord told Abraham to go into the land. He would show him, but where was this land? Abraham was expected to follow his GPS. That is, God's positioning system, which always includes the recalculations of this route. There were many apparent obstacles which could have been faith challenges for Abraham and his family. Faith is defined in Hebrews 11 as the assurance of things hoped for the convictions of things not seen. The nature of faith is seeing what is hoped for and acting with certainty on the basis of God's word. Taking a step of faith means that you consider your decision by seeking the Lord's guidance in his word, praying, praying about it, and moving forward, certain that the Lord will work things out under his promise and guidance. In the midst of decisions in our life, faith is placed in the Lord, not in our own decision-making abilities. As Mother Lana reminded me this morning, our faith is always Jesus, not chance or wishful thinking. Even when we cannot see the outcome, we move forward in assurance and conviction, recognizing that Yahweh is in control. The faith which the Lord created in Abraham was followed by outward obedience. He took the step of faith and left as the Lord had told him, leaving his country, his people, and his father's household. The only recorded man in our text was the promise of the Lord to guide and provide for him in every step of the way. In Hebrews 11 8, it says, Faith of Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. I stated earlier that this step of faith on Abraham's part was focused on faith in Christ. Such faith given to us by the Holy Spirit is meant to be acted upon in our daily lives. Obedience to the Lord Jesus is the fruit of faith based on God's word. Thus you may not know where you are going, but know whom you are following. Even if you feel you know where you are going, you may not know exactly how to get there. Even if you know how to get there, it is likely that getting there will involve many more steps of faith as your route is recalculated by your GPS, God's positioning system. It will always require more steps of faith. Taking the steps of faith is very important for us because we too are people of the promise. We are people who have experienced the fulfillment of God's promise given to Abraham in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Abraham's faith was not some leap into the unknown or blindfold or blind faith. Rather, he was walking into the land of Canaan, which was known by God. What is more important is that God knows where you are going. Faith may not know what is coming ahead of you, 
but it moves you to action because God knows. It trusts him every step of the way by faith. You are certain about where you are going because the one you follow, you follow has it all under control. He empowers you by his Holy Spirit to take those steps of faith as you follow him. The Lord's leading Abraham to the promised land was a picture of your journey of faith today. The most he could do was see them and greet them from far and acknowledge that he was a stranger on the earth, his Abraham. He too desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one, where God has prepared an eternally permanent residence for us in Jesus Christ. We are the heirs of all God's blessings, given to Abraham through faith in Jesus Christ. So let us take God at his word. Let us take the steps of faith. Let us follow him daily and see how his Holy Spirit will produce his results in the midst of our daily lives. After all, as Jesus says about our salvation, with man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Amen. And now, as we reflect on the leaps of faith that we are all called to make, if you're comfortable, please standing as we profess together our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, please stand, sit or kneel as you feel comfortable. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, our light and our life. Renew our lives. O oh, Lord our God, at this time of end, help us to aim higher as we seek to renew the disruptive of our discipleship. May we take up the best and give up the rest, and know your mercy and grace in all things. Lord of Renew our lives. At this 
time of Lent, we ask that you strengthen and empower our leaders of the church, for Archbishop, <coughs> our Bishop Paul and Sarah, Archdeacon John, and our Mary of Jesus. And we pray also for our own Mother Anna and Mother Patricia, that you will watch over them and their families at all times. Lord of Lent, renew, renew our, our lives. At this time of Lent, help us to be an encouragement to others, to show by the body of Christ the love and the desire to bring others to know him as we know him. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. At this time of Lent, let us look with compassion on those whose minds are full of anxiety and bewilderment, and of those who are also sick. And in pain, we have in our hearts some known to us, some known to the church, and some known only to the Jews. We bring them to mind now. Clear away from them. We pray that feeding to fear and hurt that hinder their healing. May your healing touch restore them and help them. Lord of Lent, renew, renew our lives. We pray for those on our ethical world. We pray for Tiana Daigini, Veronica Davis, Catherine Grace, Angela Duncan, and all their families and loved ones. Lord of Lent, renew, renew our lives. We pray for all those who were and live. In Whitstone Close, Bulbury Way, and Windmill Road, Whitstone Terrace. Lord of Lent, renew, renew our, our lives. lives. We pray this week, we ask your prayers this week for a holy and offensive Lent, and for children in hospital, children at risk, and children separated from the families. Lord of Lent, Renew our lives. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, if you are comfortable standing, please stand as we share the peace of God with one another. And when it comes to it, um, a reminder that we share the peace by signing at the moment. Um, so we sign, peace be with you. Peace be with you. So in a moment, we'll come back to that. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Olcams and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you all. It's really lovely. And if this is your first time here, you are very welcome. And if this is your 1,247th time, you are equally welcome. So, um, and if it is, then you've been here a really, really long time. Um, so what have we got going on? You've all got the pew sheet, so you can see the notices on here. Um, one thing, um, Edie, Edie's at the back there by the coffee cart. She's wearing a, a fabulous scarf that's one colour down one side and another down the other. So if you don't know Edie, that's Edie. And she is um, taking names and taking questions about the parish trip to the St. Old Helms Festival in Sherbourne in Dorset. The basic information is there. Talk to Edie if you haven't given her your name and you're interested in going. We've got about 20 people who are currently saying that they will, um, that they're interested, so that's fantastic. Going down on the train, we'll sort accommodation out for one night stay. We're hoping to keep the cost down to about £30 per person by dint of fundraising and grants and so on. So if you're interested in that, I think it'll be lovely. There'll be um, an events during the day in, in Sherbourne outside the Abbey. There'll be a service in Sherbourne Abbey in which we will take part. Um, then we'll go out for a meal in the evening and on the Sunday we'll do a, a pilgrimage, a little trip out to St. Old Helm's Head where there is a very old chapel dedicated to St. Old Helm. Um, and there's like um, a, a mile long walk along the cliff to get there. It's a perfectly safe path. And for people who can't walk, we'll lay on transport. So that will all be lovely and then come home by train. So like I say, have a think about that. Talk to Edie if you're interested. Now, as part of that, those of you who, are, uh, who come on Tuesdays to the stitching group will know that we are going to make a banner. We are stitching a banner to take with us to be part of the service, a banner that's about St. Old Helm. Um, and we are also um, having um, some singing workshops. We're going to sing, learn to sing some very old English plain song. So the ancient music of the English church. Um, we're going to have a, um, a workshop um, at the end of March. And I haven't put the dates on here because I was away last week. Um, but it is... Has anybody got a diary to hand? It's, I think it's the, it's the last Saturday in March. Is it the 25th? What date is it today? Fifth today. So it'll be three weeks yesterday, the 25th of March. More details I'll put in the email that will go out and in next week's pew sheet. Anybody who fancies a go can come along to that. It's led by my sister, Leah, who, as you know, her job is that she's a medieval musician. That's her expertise. She's currently doing a doctorate. Um, studying, she's about to submit her PhD thesis and all of her academic interest is in medieval music and how people perform and sing medieval music. And she's absolutely passionate about this because what she says is, this is your music, this is your heritage, it belongs to us, it belongs to all of us. Just because it was sung 1,200 years ago doesn't mean it's not ours, it is ours. Um, and she's a, she is very good at teaching people to sing this. And we'll learn some short pieces, which we will then sing in Sherbourne Abbey. So that will be our contribution. Lots of people are going to Sherbourne for this weekend from different places, mostly in the West Country. And our big contribution will be that we will be singing some plain song in the Abbey. So I think that's going to be super cool. So um, book that in your diaries, the 25th, Saturday the 25th. That will be great. Um, this evening, 6 p.m., we are going to All Saints. Oh, oh, is it All Saints? It, it's St. Alphage. Yeah, that's not been changed, but our mistake. It's St. Alphage, um, which is up the Hartford Road. Um, oh. Oh, that's weird. It should have been on. Right, okay. Anyway, mistake on the pew sheet. Um, it, that's actually accurate for next week, but what we didn't put in is what's on today. Anyway, there we go. 
Today, it's at St Alphage, um, which, as I say, is up the Hartford Road. So uh, we're going up there. So, And as I keep saying, we're doing this every Sunday in Lent at a different church. And please don't let us be the church that, no, that doesn't go to anybody else's services. So if you can go, because it just looks naff, right? We don't want to be that church. We want to be the church that supports other churches, correct? Yes, Mother Anna, yes, we do. So do come along at six o'clock to St. Alphage, um, um, because we would very much like a lot of people from the other churches to come to our joint service, which is two weeks tonight, no, three weeks tonight, on the 26th of March. Next week, next Sunday, we're having a special service in which we are thinking about safeguarding and the importance of safeguarding in our church. And as a bonus, the sermon slot will be taken up by training everybody who's present in church at the, most, at the basic level of um, safeguarding training that the diocese offers. And that level of training, basically everybody should have it. So if you're on a rota, in any way, if you're on a rotor, you should be having this training. If you are have any other role in church, you should definitely be having this training. Um, but just generally, it's a really interesting um, and useful and quite short way to start thinking about the importance of keeping everybody safe in our churches. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. So there'll be some of you who are going like, oh, safeguarding, but yay, no sermon. So there you go. So that's the quid pro quo. You don't have to have a sermon, but you do have to do the safeguarding training. So that is what is going to happen. Um, a little extra reminder, just, just don't forget, Tuesdays and Fridays, we have our cafe in the church run by the young people from West Lee. Tuesday, it tends to run, I'm going to say 10.30 to 1.30 is your safest time slot because they set up and they pack away. So 10.30 to 1.30, they are in here. They will make you a really genuinely good flat white or a cappuccino or an espresso, whatever your flavor of coffee is, they will make that for you. And they are just a joy, aren't they? They are. Anybody who is here on... Gloria, they're a fantastic crew, aren't they? They're absolutely amazing. Anybody else who comes regularly on a Tuesday, Charlotte, you know, they're a blessing. They bake cakes as well. They bake cakes as well. Yeah, Charlotte, top, top... Yeah, they do. Every week they make cakes or biscuits, sometimes savoury things. Um, and so they are all of... But honestly, if you could see the joy with which these young people serve people, the joy with which they use the skills that they are learning, if you're feeling miserable on a Tuesday... I guarantee if you come to this cafe, you will feel better when you walk out of the doors. On a Friday, it's a different group of young people, also adorable, but it's much quieter on a Friday and they really like custom. So if you find yourself free on a Friday morning, just bob into church, have a cup of coffee and a chat to these young people and they will be so delighted to see you um, that it really, it really is. It does your heart good and like I say, also first rate coffee. We, we are trying to get to a place where this church is open four or five days a week and people can just pop in and there'll be somebody there and they can have a brew and they can have a chat and they can sit down and it will be a place that, that we want to feel like somewhere that anybody in the community can just pop in, sit down, have a cup of tea or a coffee, chat to somebody and move on. And it takes a while to get to that point, but I think it's safe to say we've got that on a Tuesday and a Thursday now, haven't we? Yeah, a bit fewer on Friday. So if we can, if you can be part of that, you don't need to, there's no rotor. You don't have to show up at a certain time, but just pop in and be prepared to sit down and chat to people and show them God's welcome. That's it. Um, have I forgotten any actual notices? I know about birthdays and travel. Have I forgotten any actual notices? In that case, have we got any birthdays? Oh, Ruth, Ruth, come on up. And you're... Why do... No, seriously. Why does Mother Anna get a birthday? <laughs> Were there no birthdays last week? Oh, Mother Patricia, you can come and do the birthdays. Come on, yeah. I fix the rotor and I consult everybody's birthday. That's what I do, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Ruth, you're going to get a double blessing now. Um, and also, anybody else will... will, will We'll remember your sister and anybody else that you've maybe got in your mind will think about them as well as we pray. Take it away. Ruth, on this your birthday, 
May the blessing of the Father fill you and surround you. Amen. Keep you safe and help you to enjoy this special time. I pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessing through us. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you in the year ahead. Amen. 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 And we pray, as I say, for everybody else. And now, oh, look, are we going to get sax accompaniment for the happy birthday? Oh, she's like, no, 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 no. Are we going to get anything? There. Anybody going anywhere? Nope. I don't get any trouble, see? It's just birthdays. Okay. In that case, as we come to the end of our service, if you're comfortable standing, please stand for God's blessing. God, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.